John 6, 5. Cum sublevaset ergo oculos, Jesus, et vidisset quia multitudo maxima venet ad eum, dicit ad pilipum, unde ememus panes ut manducent hi. When, therefore, Jesus had lifted up his eyes and had seen that a very large crowd was coming to him, he says to Philip, where shall we buy bread, loaves of bread, we might say, in order that these might eat? Though this is a longer verse and there are a few interesting forms and constructions to account for, it need not trouble us greatly. Let's take it step by step and work our way through it. So here we're continuing with narrative uh, as so far in the other verses in this chapter. And when we're dealing with narrative mixed in with discourse, uh, it's best just to start with establishing what's going on around the discourse, around the talking. So therefore, when... And this is a key term for us because it's going to explain this cum, that is, sublawaset et widiset as forms. These are subjunctives that occur because of cum circumstantial. That is a cum indicating the circumstances under which something else happens. When cum is used in such a way as opposed to simply in a detailed temporal sense, that is, when the third day dawned or something like that. When we're talking about the general circumstances surrounding another action, and we see cum, generally we're going to find forms of the subjunctive in Latin. And here we have the pluperfect subjunctive uh, in both cases. So, when Jesus, the subject, had lifted up, and the object here of lifted up is his eyes, and when he had seen, and the thing he sees is this next clause, so to speak, when he had seen that a very large crowd was coming to him, was approaching him, then these other things happened. One thing that I want to mention briefly here, just in case this confuses you, is that this is actually a syncopated form, sublevaset. Really, it's sublevaviset. But as often happened in the Latin of all periods, this word was shortened for convenience and a syllable was dropped out in order to make it a little bit easier to say and to read. Sobla wa set is really sobla wa we set from soblewo, sobleware, soblewawi, soblatos. So when he had lifted up his eyes and he had seen that a huge crowd was coming to him, then we switch to the present tense, and this is kind of that historical present that really replaces what we would expect to be a perfect tense, a simple past tense. He did something, but for vividness, we have a present with the same sense. If you were translating formally into English, you just keep it in the past for consistency, probably. He says, literally, to Philip, and then here's our quotation. And it's important to note, first of all, that this is a question. And unda tips us off to that. From where? From where? And then we get this third conjugation verb here, emo. Buy, purchase, obtain, acquire, something like that. Where shall? Notice again, when we're talking about the third conjugation here, we're not going to have that nice, obvious infix, the bi infix, to show the future tense like we had in the first and second conjugations. For the third conjugation, we've just got to pay attention and notice that something's up with the vowel here indicating a different tense. Whence or from where shall we buy panes, literally probably we would say loaves of bread. And then here we've got another clause in the subjunctive, ut manducent he. Now manduco is a first conjugation verb, so we've got to explain why we've got the present subjunctive here. And the answer lies in the ut. Where shall we buy bread? And then here we've got a purpose clause. In order that these people, all these people, he, often also simply written this way, may eat. 